Hi everyone, today what we're going to do is to create a WordPress website using Amazon LightSail. So what you do first is you'll log into the Amazon console and then from there select LightSail. And then once you've opened up LightSail, you'll be presented with this home screen here um, where you can go and create an instance. Now an instance is a server where you can create you know, multiple servers, you can manage them separately. Um, and you can create snapshots from those. But uh, today what we're gonna do is just create a, a blank instance and then set up a WordPress site on that. And I'll show you all the steps to configure it. So first what we'll do is go over here and click on create instance. And this will load up. And for a WordPress site, it's typically pre-selected here. Um, so um, for this example, we'll set up a, a site in Sydney. Um, with the Linux or the Unix blueprint and from here WordPress is already pre-selected. You've got a whole lot of other options here but uh, today we're just going to select WordPress and um, a little bit of a, a, you know, a disclaimer of what sort of included in this pack that it will pre-install and um, uh, at this stage here we can include automatic snapshots. So what that means is every day um, you can create a, a backup of your website and um, if for any reason you break it, you can always go back and restore that backup plan. Um, now, the first month is free, which is great. You can you can set it up, you can test it out, um, but just on the basic plan here, you, you can choose different tiers. I recommend just starting out with the, the base. And then if at any time you want to upgrade, you can easily upgrade by restoring one of these backups to a new instance. So uh, that's really handy to know that you don't actually need to choose the full plan up front unless you're going to restore a plan that needs this amount of space. So just start off with the basic plan here until your website's up and running. Um, now what you want to do is give your instance a name and that's a unique name just to identify it. So, you know, if you're creating a, a brand new website for a clothing store or something like that, that might be the, the name that you give it. But um, for this example today, we'll, ju we'll just give it a, a name such as um, uh, my first website. And it'll just need to contain no spaces, no hyphens or things like that. We'll give it a a name of one and we'll just have one instance of that. So, you know, if you're a power user, you might create multiple instances of it, but for today, we'll just start off with one. So we'll create this instance here. Excellent. So after a few moments, this creates your instance and here it is ready to go. So what we can do now is we can go and click on that. And um, what you'll see, it has assigned an IP address and also an IP version six address as well. Um, so I'll go in and click on this and we can start to do some fun things with our site. So um, at this stage, um, nothing really has been configured <laughs> too much. Uh, so it's just a blank website. And the only way you can access that at the moment is by using the IP address that it automatically assigns here. And it gives you a username and a password. Now you can't actually see what the password is. What you need to do is you need to go in and find the password within the website by connecting to a client. So we'll do that in a minute here. But what I'll do is I'll just bring this up here and I'll copy this IP address and I'll jump over to another browser. Okay, so now what I've done is I've just pasted that IP address into another tab. And as you can see, what it's done is it's created a blank WordPress website. It's up and running, ready to go. Now what it does when you create a WordPress site through LightSail is it adds a bit NAMI to this and so what that does is it's just adding a little layer on top of your website um, as you can see the bottom left hand corner it's got forward slash bitnami forward slash index.html and that just gives you some instructions on how you can go in and, and access this website and also how you can remove this an, a banner so it's got a little x button there but if you click on that um, it pops up with a, 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 a help URL just to tell you about how you can access your WordPress websites 
and log into the console and how you can also remove this help message that is appearing. So um, what we'll do first is we'll, we'll log into the admin console. All right, so here we've got the admin console here and it's told us that the username, uh, the default username for this is user. But uh, unfortunately, we don't know what the password is. So we're going to have to go and try and find out what that password is by logging into the back end of the website. So just from a security perspective, that password is pre-configured, but it doesn't email it or do anything. So you have to actually log in and access that directly. So let's do that now. So it's really easy to uh, log in and access uh, uh, the back end of the website. But um, if you're you're not someone who does coding a lot, this might be a little bit daunting, um, particularly if you don't really use terminal or things like that um, day to day. So if you just want a basic WordPress website, it's a little bit more complicated than an average user, but I'll, I'll show you how to do this now. So what we do is we click on this button here saying connect using SSH. Okay, so now that we've logged into the terminal here, what we can do is we type in C a T space bitnami underscore application underscore password press enter and in this case it's given us the password that was pre-configured for the WordPress website so we've just copied that password there now we can jump over to our WordPress website paste that password in and press login. There you go. So now you've got access to your WordPress website. Um, so that was pretty easy. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we've set up the website, but it's only configured to um, uh, an IP address at the moment. So what you'll want to do separately from this is go in and access wherever your domain is kept. Maybe that's Route 53, or maybe you've got another domain registrar. Uh, go there and update your A record for your domain name to your IP address. Now, one of the things that you need to be careful of is when you're in the LightSail dashboard, what you have here is a public IP address. But every time that you press stop and start, this public IP address will change. So what you'll want to do, if you're going to stop and start your server every now and then, is click on networking, and you want to create a static IP. And you give that a name. And then now what you have is actually a different IP address that will be the permanent IP address that you can attach to this instance. And if for any other reason you create another instance, you can move this IP address to another instance, but that just is a permanent IP address that you can attach to your domain name, which you know it just makes it easier to manage your website. But if you're not careful, what will happen is you've just created a different IP address. So you'll need to now navigate to the new IP address if you haven't already set up your domain name. So I'll go and log in once more, but under the new IP address that I created. Then what you'll see here is the IP address of your current WordPress website. Now, just for the purpose of testing and, and demonstrating this, I'm going to create a new subdomain and I'll paste in that static IP address and we'll create that record. What we can do now is navigate to the website. In this case, it was test.internetstack.com. Log in with the same username and password that you had before. And what you'll notice is that the WordPress address has updated. So that was pretty easy. But if we navigate back to our blog here, what we'll notice is that this Bitnami icon is still showing there. Uh, typically you can close that off, but what it, it won't actually really remove this permanently. So what we wanna do is go in, in here and remove this. Now, if you click on this link, it does give you instructions how to do this, but I'll take you through that now. 
So if you click on the link at the bottom of the previous page, it'll, it'll navigate over here and I'll show you that what you can do is simply copy this code here and paste it back in the terminal page. So what you want to do is paste that in, but instead of app name, we do need to delete at name here and type in WordPress instead because we have installed a WordPress instance on this site and press enter. What that will do is disable the banner on the website. Now that has done. And then finally, the last step that we'll need to do is to restart our website so it removes the banner. So to do that, it's very easy. We'll just come back over to the Amazon Light Sale, click on Reboot, press Reboot. And we'll just probably need to wait maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And then once that's done, we can reload our website. And hopefully that reloads without There you go. So the WordPress website is now set up and the Bitnami banner has been removed and you're ready to go. Start publishing.